when when God gets ready, he, listen, I'm telling you, I was sitting down later tonight and the Lord began to minister to me and speak to me. He says, tell the people on tonight that I will be to them the God of more than enough. I am the big breasted one. Tell them that I that I will be to them the God of more than enough. When, when God ushers the children of Israel into the promised land, he doesn't usher them into a place of less than enough. But he ushers them into a place of more than enough because he's a God of more than enough. Some of us, some of us have been going through seasons of, of less than enough that, that we can't even conceive or perceive what it would be like to have more than enough. You you've had enough to pay the light bill, but you didn't have to pay. You didn't have enough to pay the phone bill. Can I tell you that you're about to enter into a season where you're going to have enough money to pay Jim, Paul and all y'all. Y'all are y'all with me tonight? Listen, this is not a feel good prophetic word. This is a Holy Ghost field prophetic word. I'm telling you where God is about to bring you. Some of us can't comprehend this because we've struggled for so long. Robbing Peter to pay Paul. God's about to bring you to a place where you're able to pay Peter, Paul, and all y'all. Are y'all with me? When, when God ushers the children of Israel into the land of promise, because he's a God of more than enough. I'm telling you, I was sitting down at my kitchen table and I heard the Lord say, tell the people of God that in this season, I shall be the God of more than enough to them. When, 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 when God ushers the children of Israel into the land of promise, he doesn't usher them into a place of less than enough, but he ushers them into a place of more than enough. Why? Because he's the God of more than enough. In, in the book of Exodus, chapter three, right about verse 17, God says to the children of Israel, he says, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt, out of this world system unto the land of the Canaanites, the Hattites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Havites, the Jebusites, unto a land, he says, flowing with milk and honey. I am about to bring you to a place of more than enough. He says to the children of Israel, you know how to function on less than enough. You know how to function on just enough. He says, but now I'm about to flip the script and bring you to a place of more than enough. The Lord told me to tell you that many of you all, you know how to function on less than enough. You, you know what it's like to live on just enough but you've not known what it is to encounter more than enough. God told me to tell you that in this season, he's about to be the God of more than enough to you. He brings them into a place, the word of God says, that's Lisha, that's flowing with milk and honey. Flowing with milk and honey. Flowing with milk and honey. The milk was a typology of their needs. The honey was a typology of their wants and their desires. The milk was a typology of their needs because every female that God has created 
has the ability and the dexterity to produce milk because it's a necessity. It's a symbolic of the necessities of life. The milk was a symbolic of the necessity of life. The honey was, a, was symbolic of the desires of life. He brings them into a place that's flowing with milk and with honey. The milk was symbolic of the necessities of life. The honey was symbolic of the de wants of the wants and desires of life. God is concerned about your wants and your desires. Yes, he is. He, God's not just concerned about your needs. He's not just concerned about the necessities of life. He's concerned about your wants and your desires. James chapter one, right about verse two, says, count it all joy when you come into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, work at patience. Let patience have a perfect work. Watch this now. So that you might be perfect and entire. Watch this now. Not just needing nothing, but what? But wanting nothing. God says, my desire is to bring you to a place where you not only just need nothing, but to bring you to a place where you won't even want nothing. Could you imagine what it's like to live not even wanting nothing because every want that you desire, God's met? Count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, work in patience, let patience have a perfect work so that you might be perfect and entire, not just needing nothing, but wanting nothing. David said in Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Watch this now. Not I shall not need. He says, but the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Watch this. For I want you to have an understanding. That Psalms 23 is not just going to be a declaration for you. It's going to be an experience for you. Lift up your hands right now if you believe that. I say lift up your hand right now, wherever you are. Lift up your hands if you believe that Psalms 23 is about to become a reality for you. And not just a verse. It's. David said, David says, the Lord is my shepherd, not I shall not need. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, because God is a God of more than enough. Ushers them to a place. Lady Maria, blessings to you. God ushers the children of Israel to a place that is flowing with milk and honey. Milk and honey were symbolisms. They were they were metaphors. Milk and honey were, were typologies. The milk was a typology of the needs and necessities of life. The honey was a typology of the wants and desires of life. He brings them to a place where their needs and their wants and their desires are just flow. He, he says he says he says the land was what flowing with milk and honey it wasn't dripping with milk and honey it was it was flowing with milk and honey if you have ever seen a river flow rivers flow constantly rivers flow consistently Watch the metaphor now. Watch the metaphor. Watch the metaphor. Rivers flow constantly. Rivers flow consistently. What was God trying to communicate and articulate when he says that he ushered them into a place that flowed with milk and honey? Here's what he's communicating. Here's what he's articulating. Their needs and their wants were met constantly. And their needs and their wants were met consistently. He's, the Bible says that he ushers them into a place. Exodus chapter 3 verse 17 says that God ushers them into a place that what? That flowed with milk and honey. That flowed with milk and honey. When a river flows, it flows constantly, it flows consistently, and it never stops flowing. God 
is about to bring you into a place where he constantly meets your needs, where he constantly meets your desires. For many of us, it's just unimaginable to even live in such a place. For many of us, it's it's unimaginable to even encounter such a place where my needs and my wants and my desires will be met constantly and will be met consistently. But God said, Yarabakaya, Masiyamaha. He said, Tell the people on to the night that in this season I shall be the God of more than enough to them. I shall be a God of more than enough to them. He's a, he's a God of more than enough. Tell them I should be in this season a God of increase to them. Tell them I shall be a God of extra to them, a God of multiplication to them. Tell them in this season I shall be a God of elevation to them, a God of expansion a God of enlargement, a God of growth. In this season, I decree and I declare that God is going to be a God of increase to you. You're going to see increase within, uh, somebody say three months, somebody say three months, three months, within the next three months, how many days is that from here? How many days is that within the next three months? How many days is that? How many days is that within the next three months? That's 90 days. Within the next three months, you are about to see the God of more than enough manifest himself where your life is concerned. Within the next three months, you are about to see the God of increase manifest himself. You are about to see the God of extra manifest himself. Within the next three months, you're about to see the God of multiplication, the God of elevation, the God of expansion, the God of enlargement the God of growth. I decree and declare tonight this is going to be a season of increase for you, a season of extra for you. It's going to be a season of multiplication for you, a season of elevation for you. It's going to be a season of expansion, a season of enlargement, a season of growth within the next three years. I don't say this just to say this. I don't speak this lightly. I say this because I've heard from God within the next three months, you're going to see the hand of God begin to elevate you. You're going to see the hand of God expand you. You're going to see the hand of God enlarge you. You're going to see the hand of God grow you. You're going to see the hand of God begin to multiply you and increase you. You are going to see the hand of God expand you. There shall be no losses, no subtractions. In this season, 
But this shall be a season of expansion, of growth, of increase. Can somebody type that for me? Expansion, growth, increase. There shall be no losses in this season. I speak it and decree it and declare it over your life now. There should be no losses in this season. There shall be no subtractions in this season. For this shall be a season of expansion, a season of growth, a season of increase. Lady Talia, there is something that you desired to do years ago that didn't work out the way you wanted it to. Before the year is out, you're going to see the hand of God move and this thing is going to work for you. I'm talking to Lady Talia now. There is something that you wanted to do years ago that didn't quite work out the way you desired it to. The Lord told me to tell you that before the year is over, that thing that you desired to do that didn't come into manifestation years ago, that didn't come into fruition shall. I'm going to say it again. I said it shall come to pass this year. Before the year is over, it shall come to pass. I don't know what it is you tried to do years ago that did not come into fruition, that did not come into manifestation but I'm telling you, I've heard the Lord concerning you. He says, tell my daughter that the thing that she tried to do years ago that did not work out according to plan, that that did not come into fruition, that did not come into manifestation. He said, tell her that before the end of the year, it shall lift up your hands and tell God, thank you. I said, I said, lift up your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. God said that before this year is over, it shall come to pass and it shall come into fruition. And may the Lord God of glory bless and prosper the works of your hands. I said, may the Lord God of glory bless and prosper the works of your hands. But I was sitting down this evening and the Lord just began to minister to me. I want you to just tell the people of God that's it, that in this season, I am going to be the God of more than enough to them. I'm going to be, this is going to be a season of elevation for them, a season of expansion for them, a season of enlargement for them, a season of of growth for them. The Lord told me to tell you that there are some of you in whom I hear that overlooked opportunities that were of him and you did so because of the overwhelmingness that the opportunity brought to you not knowing that to whom much is given, much is required. But I hear the word of the Lord say that the opportunities are coming back again. Receive them, saith the Spirit of the Lord. Receive them, saith the Spirit of the Lord. Walk in them. For I have prepared you for them. Remember, said the Lord your God, to whom much is given, much is required. I see some of you are walking away from opportunities that were of God. And, and these opportunities are coming back to you. They're coming back to you. In the time in which you walked away, it was a little bit stressful. It was a little bit overwhelming but they're coming back to you and you're going to walk in them and you're going to discover that upon walking in them that God had already prepared you for them for to whom much is given, much is required. 
And the Lord told me to tell you that it's not even about the initial opportunity that you're about to walk in. The opportunity is going to open up something even greater for you that God has purposed for you. It's not even about the opportunity that was presented to you. The opportunity that was presented is going to open a door to something greater for you. But the Lord said, tell the people that in this season, this is going to be a season of elevation. I'm going to be a God of more than enough to them. This is going to be a season of elevation, a season of expansion, a season of enlargement and a season of growth. 